The Sesh Podcast, episode 175, take one. Hello, hogs and swines. Feeling fine, sipping your wine, one of a kind, count your dimes. Wait, <laughs> that's like really good. Yeah, thank you. I thought that you were I'm just, trying to be a rapper, actually. I, I thought that because you're like, I don't know. I don't have anything. It's just going to whatever comes out of my mouth. I thought it was <laughs> literally stupid. was whatever came out of my That's mouth. That's like good, though. Yeah, it was pretty good, right? Yeah. Hogs and swines. I'll explain to you why I've got hogs and swines on the mind. mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, we can start out with that. Okay. I've got to show you guys a little clip. First of all, I'm Kendall. I'm Janelle. And we're joined by our producers, Crelly and Sydney. Welcome, ladies. Welcome. How's it going? Welcome. Curly, I mean, Sydney, sing sing your best welcome. No. Don't make her do that. <laughs> she doesn't want to do that. Well, I appreciate you. Curly. You know, I'm a team player. Welcome. Welcome. You guys are so good. Welcome. Welcome to the city. Oh, I don't know. We're annoying. People are going to click off. No, don't click off. No, don't click off. Don't, no, 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 no. We'll Come stop. No, we'll no, stop we're, stopping. we're stopping. We're stopping. We're stopping. Give us hey. another chance. Okay. One more chance. I can redeem you guys with this. <laughs> so, See, I know what people want. You know. Yeah, yeah, you do. That's why. That's yeah. why they You're stay. here for the people. Stick yeah. for, stick around for Sydney, okay? She's not being annoying. <laughs> mm-hmm. As I someone sing. once commented, I'm out. Y'all suck, minus Crowley and Cindy. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> True that, baby. So funny. Okay, well, I wanted to start off this episode with a little bit of joy. Because we are getting into some serious topics today. Well, just one serious topic. Just one. But... You know how we've been really into checking out the dressage? Yes. And the hobby horsing? Mm-hmm. Yes. Which mm-hmm. I still really want to do. Yeah. I think we need to do a hobby horse competition on the show, like in the ne- in the next couple months. Okay. Like maybe next week. Actually, next week we won't be here. Heads up. We're actually on our dark week next yeah, week. Yeah, sorry. We're bailing on yo asses. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it always sucks having to miss an episode yeah. especially because we love doing our and shows, i hope but. nothing happens in in the media and yeah pop culture because i want to talk about probably it. No, no 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 nothing's gonna happen but yeah we, we take two dark weeks per year well like so we more can, like four yeah well but i guess around yeah the we take the holiday break and then we do two off weeks yeah but, you know just a little recharge time i feel like i look really weird do you guys think i look weird yeah i feel like i look really pale Super weird. Super weird. Weirdest I've ever seen you. (laughs) No, you look gorgeous. I just told you like before we started recording. Thank you. You look great. Your hair looks voluminous. You look healthy and glowy and happy. You actually do. You actually do. Oh my God. Oh my God. Sipping her wine, counting her dimes. (laughs) Bam. Thank you. I'll take that. Okay. So I have found something and I'm curious if you guys have already seen this. And I feel like Janelle may have because you live on TikTok and you've probably come across this. I really do. I only do like 20 minutes a day max really good for you like normally like 10 even so i don't get to a lot of the good stuff that you find what are you filling your time with when you're not mobile games right (laughs) i'm a big gamer right 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 and i watch a lot of tv yeah that's my downtime mobile games and tv okay it's the best yep it is but i did in my little bits of scrolling found something very interesting and i do feel like you've probably already seen i don't know okay so this is something new for us to explore you guys i found a new type of competition involving animals except for this is real animals i know what this is yeah you probably do know what this is i bet Uh, curly you have some familiarity with this one sec though i need headphones now this is some serious shit okay this is a very intense world of competition This looks serious. It's really serious. Wow. This bitch will cut you in her eyes. Shut up. (laughs) I'm surprised you haven't seen this. No. Stop. This is what is it? What is I believe it's called hog showing or like swine showing. Why are they why are they staring? It's all part of it. It's all part of (laughs) it. See? (laughs) Everyone there, they look like do not fuck with my pig. And there's a whole Why are they all twelve? I think it's mostly for kids. Maybe this is like the kids league. Like 4-H or something. Well, this whole account that I found, I think it's called like Dawson's Farm or something. Wait. And they have tons of videos of these too. Wait. They don't we fuck need to like around. do this. I know we should do it. We should get the dogs and, and do it. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> See? 
It's real serious. Holy. Everyone's glaring. And it's like, do not fuck with my pig. But this girl is on another level. Damn. She Holy. takes this swine showmanship to the next level. So I was really curious about this. Why are they doing that? Yeah. What are they being judged yeah. on in this part of it? It yes. is part of the whole process. So check out this latest video from, I think, what's the account called? Like Dawson Farms or Donson or Dadson. Oh, Dadson. Dadson Dad Farms. Dadson Farms. Dadson Farms. Are you trying to oh, dad, dad and, and son? son? Maybe, I, I don't know. Who? Anyway, but here's their explanation. If you'll turn up the volume for this, they explain why this is being done. Okay. Called showmanship, so it is a competition based on how well the kids show their pigs. The eye contact is a big part of showmanship, but not the only thing Do they are judged on. Once. They are judged on their first impression, which is basically where the exhibitor and pig gets the spotlight to show how well they have control. The poor pig. Show the views of the pig and their <laughs> individual like, style. Settle down there. Their pig saying. needs to have good skin and hair and be presented well. <laughs> also, good you need to keep hair. the pig's head up, and you want your pig to keep moving forward, even through a crowd. The eye contact works to help pull the judge's attention and shows how much control you have. I'm sorry, it but her form compared to every other yeah, person in there, she, the she is a star. She is. Pig. She ate. The exhibitor she needs ate to and left no in between them and the judge. They should show all views of the pig, rear view, chest Ooh, view, and view. profile. <laughs> Jeez, the showmanship can be so competitive it can come pigs. down to oh the exhibitor's hand placement, posture, or even pace and sweetness of the exhibitor and pig. Hope Usually this helps. it's giving Oklahoma. No yeah. offense. To I think them. he was in California. I saw oh, mm, these a are lot. some Cali swines. <laughs> I think a lot of the kids are part of like the 4-H yeah. groups and stuff. Like uh, ag, yeah, yeah, like yeah. ag, yeah, agriculture. Probably. Probably. I don't know. It's giving Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, we, yes. <laughs> we might need to do a competition where yes. we do three rounds. We do our own rodeo, per se. Yes. You know, we could do a hobby horse round, and then we can use the dogs and do the swine thing. Yes. We need to think of one more activity, though. Um, Can I call dibs on Sadie? Yes. Sure. Okay. Thank you. You that, can have Bernie. Work. I'll take Bernie. Yeah. We need to bring Callie in, and then we'll do Charlie. Mm. Yeah. What I really need to bring is Oakley. Yeah, yeah, my great Pyrenees. He's a he's like a big pig. Yeah, but it'd be really funny with Bernie because Bernie is Bernie also, would be so annoyed though. He'd yeah, like, exactly. What the fuck are you doing? Wow, I know. But we need to think of one more round. Does anyone have any ideas? We need obviously three. Um, how about roping? Uh, that's kind of what I was thinking. But yeah. with stuffed animals, like yeah, or we can get like lasso. Or we can get like um, they have like the 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 horned. It's like a oh, it's yeah. like a yeah. hay bale with the horns on it. Oh, okay. Hell. And yeah. then we just lasso it up. I want yeah. some chaps. I think we need to Assless? do assless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> YouTube bring, won't allow. That'll be the views. Unfortunately, in. well, but you can wear something underneath. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rodeo. I want to yep. do it. So in the next know, couple weeks. I'm googling about this. This is called driving your hog. Yeah, you be driving that hog. Well, when I'm driving, you should be on the hog side, which is opposite to the judge. Okay, okay. So we're going to have to practice. A judge will not be impressed if you always block everyone else's view or overmaneuver your animal. Okay. Keep your pig 10 to 20 feet away from the judge. Who's going to be our judges? Well, that's what we'll have to figure out. We might have to recruit some, some of our team in the back. Or do we make the viewers be the judges? We could do that. We could do that. We'll have to plan this all out. Yeah. Wow. That is actually Such rodeo. awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. I thought it was pretty sweet. I went down a whole rabbit hole. I watched. They have a whole account and it's all this. I'm like really into it. I wonder if they get money. Guys, oh, let's. I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure there's like a grand prize, right? Let's go to the state fair this year. Let's go to the, state, this year. Yeah, go to the state fair. They we have a rodeo that. every. And also the fuck, the Western complex is here. They you do know, a rodeo here every I year. I don't really like rodeos. I agree. They stress At me all. out. In fact, I quite frankly despise them. I, I do be agree. So no, no disrespect to, to no, those who No, but I just don't rodeo. like seeing the animals stressed. No, I don't it's like that either. It's just not my vibe. I'm, I'm fine with the horse jumping stuff. Like, that's fine. Would and you? I like mm -hmm. when they bring the clown out. But when they're like... Especially when it's baby animals. No. Like, I don't want to see them being yanked by their necks. No. And I get it. It's like part of the culture and like whatever. It's just see not the comments my now. culture. What about? No, it freaks me out. What about going to an animal, animal auction? And when they say, hey, me, 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 me. Oh, no, yeah. I'll yeah. cry yeah. during that. No, yeah, because they're, they're going to so feel bad. Fun. What if they get taken to the Dude, wrong do you place know where and them... they're slaughtered? Yeah. Well, my dad buys a lot of them. So a lot but of your them dad don't, don't get slaughtered. They get. Bought, like they people yeah, buy should them. buy some. Yeah, but aren't they buying them most of the time to slaughter them? No, no. a lot of them. No. Mm -mm. Wait, lot we of... should buy some. We should <laughs> a good keep idea. Them like in the office. Cows? There we go. Yes, a brilliant baby cow. <gasps> oh, 
Oh, you have no idea. That's my dream. Calf. Oh, so Calf. Cute. cute. We'd have fresh milk every day. Yeah, we, would. we can we can each milk. We can each take turn being oh, milkmaids. I'll love- make a milk milking chart. Mm-hmm. You know, like a chore chart. Who's gonna milk today? I love cows for the coffee so machine. Much exactly. They're the, the cutest. They're so cute. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is this is good. I'm 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 down. Good. I'm glad you're on board. Yeah. I think it'll be a real fun time. Show. Yeah. Wow. There's like full ass, like websites dedicated to oh, it. Oh yeah, it's a whole thing. It's a whole Show, thing. Showmanship. I don't know though. That girl, I've never seen anyone as good as her. Because I was looking at some other videos, no one even comes close. That girl will. Her yeah. eyes will cut you like a motherfucking yeah. knife. My step siblings, yeah, they grew up on like a dairy farm, and all three of them, the way they got their first car, it's like they raise a pig, and then you they you sell, sell it. They sell their pig. That's like a big thing to get a car. Yeah, I mean usually. People do it for like, Uh. yeah, I guess you don't use it for a car, but because it's... God, I'd feel so sad though raising the pig and and it'd be really hard. Can I share a story about um, how I grew up and I had a baby, I had a baby goat. (gasps) Um, My my dad got me and I raised her. I raised her. I raised her. I had her for like mm, about a year and then I sold her, Um, except uh, I never got paid. Oh, they what? ripped me off. Yeah, they never <laughs> ripped me off. So I never got the money for the for the baby. Damn. Yeah, and um, I That's still think screwed. about it to this day. I was in like elementary school, but her name was Sweetie. Yeah. Oh my god, Aww. I love goats. Yeah. What a fun experience. Yeah, it was really it was really nice. I miss I miss Sweetie. Oh, I I would love to have a goat. Yeah, I would. Too. Like they're the cutest things. I have so many animals I'd love to have. God, have you I been following the whole animals. saga on TikTok about the guy who? He bought an octopus for his eight-year-old son, and they were documenting the whole experience. Turns out it was a female octopus that was not supposed to be pregnant. It was pregnant. How many octopus pussies do they birth? Uh, thousands. What? Thousands? I don't remember exactly. It's either that or hundreds. They have tons of them, and this family has like completely dedicated a room into their house to all these little buckets where they're taking care. It's crazy. It's Wait, wild. What? Yeah, okay, now I'll pull it Yeah, up. I was going to say, this. I'm going to need a lot more than just All that. All right, give me a second, give me a second. 50 octopuses. I think it's more than that. You know that guy on TikTok that he's like really serious? Marcus, <laughs> Marcus D. Paul, Paul, Paola? Paolo? Paolo? Yeah. Sing to me, Paolo. Let me, let me, let me drop this for you, because he does a little explanation for what happened. But the way, he, when I first started watching this TikTok, from the way he was talking, I thought he was about to say like, like some horror story like oh yeah they bought the kid the octopus and the octopus got out of the tank and killed him just like the way he speaks <laughs> it sounds like something horrible is about to happen octopus kind of freak me out a little bit what so oh like, my god no 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 no, 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 no like not in a gross way it's like they kind of just scare me a little because they're smart and yeah. i feel like they could like kill you oh i'm sure you know they I mean? probably could whoa they have their babies on a braid a braid yeah what's a braid it's a braid of babies yeah it said that um they can produce more than 50,000 eggs, but these people... How many did they end up with? 51. Oh, just 51? Okay. That's that was a way off. lot. I thought it was hundreds. But they could produce 50,000? 50, 50, yeah. That's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. But they, I mean, they got a lot more than they could bargain for here. They're yeah, trying to like find uh, aquariums and research centers to like take some of them off their hands because they can't <laughs> clearly raise 51 octopuses. Can you have a Wait. pet octopus? Yeah. You know what's actually really sad about this whole story I just looked up? What? Um, so octop- octopi, octopuses, octopuses um, can only reproduce once in their lifetime. Yeah, th- and they're all sad yeah. because the octopus that they got, and the son is so cute, and he's all attached, and they think she's going to die. She's, she may have already died. She's definitely going to die. Yeah. Yep. Oh, no. Once they reproduce, they, they, die? they die. Yeah. Like yeah. a what? It says yeah. that uh uh, once the female octopus lays its clutch of eggs, she quits eating and wastes away. Oh, girl. Yeah, it's real sad. Oh, yeah. my God. Okay. Poor girl. Am I wrong? The way that this guy reports this sounds like he's about to say this child was attacked by an octopus <laughs> or something. <laughs> is he is he real or is he AI? No, he's real. <laughs> he's real. He's been around a while. I don't know. He he. Every time I play a video of him, Josh is like, turn that man off. He's so he annoying. He looks He's intense. airbrushed. 
Have you ever, you never seen this? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh my God. He's all over the place. I don't think I've seen him either. All right. Play him. In Oklahoma, got their son a pet octopus and chaos ensued. Why is this chaos this ensued. This family had no idea that a birthday gift for blank? their nine year old son would is lead to the birth real. of he hasn't 50 blinked once. octopus babies, numerous water tanks that took over half a bathroom, and thousands <laughs> of dollars on food supplies and water. He's damage. not blinked. Okay, there we go. The dad, a 36-year-old dentist, said his son had been obsessed with octopuses since the age of three. The son had said every birthday, every Christmas, every (laughs) holiday that all he wants is an octopus. Doesn't it sound like he's going to say, yeah, like, and then the octopus yeah. killed them? Yes. Aquarium store and got a female California two spot octopus for his son's ninth <laughs> Dude, birthday. Dude, this man is not real. I'm not going to. They named her Terrence. Terrence. Terrence turned out to be larger than expected and soon began releasing <laughs> he did a not have any media? eggs two months after it arrived. No, I'll, I'll send you some media. Experts told the dad the eggs were unfertilized and the release of the eggs signaled Dude, this guy's the annoying. end of the life. So sorry. Peace and love to him. I mean, I'm sure he's a great guy. Yeah. Peace and love drives me annoying. insane. What's his name? Brenson? Bronson? Marcus. Oh. So the account where you can follow this whole uh, excursion this family is on is called um, Doc Talk to Puss. Doc Talk to Puss. Okay? Okay. Doc to Puss. Doc Talk to Puss. Yep. Doc Talk. So you can see all the little baby octopuses. Doc, doc. Is it, what's to Puss? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? what? Doc Talk the puss. Like, Doc octopus. How do you what do you spell after the C? <laughs> the puss. Doc talk. Oh wait. No, it's TikTok to puss. Sorry. I'm an idiot. No, it's Doc Talk to Puss. D O C T O K T O P U S. There he is. Yeah, look up the account. Doc and then talk just go to their videos. That's so fun to say. Doc the talk kid is puss. so cute. They oh, have the two boys actually. Wait, they all whoa. There it is. It's tiny. Terrence. It's- Oh, it looks really small. (laughs) And like, I'm sure there's a lot of criticism against getting a pet octopus. And I know that there's, I mean, it's a really serious pet. And they can escape from their tanks and like kill your dogs and cats. Oh my God. It's crazy. Josh was telling me That's why I'm scared. Have you never seen Finding Dory? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, they yeah. can fit through anything that their beak can fit through. So they can yeah. like the time. It's such it's fucking mind blowing. They're aliens. But he has made this account from what I've noticed a like PSA: do not get an octopus situation. Like in case you're thinking about getting an octopus, watch all this Don't. first. Got it. Okay. Um, octopus and ain't easy. I guess the kid was just right. like obsessed with octopuses. That's crazy. It kind of grossed me out. They're cute, though. The baby ones are so cute. They're like Can little squishes. Gosh, she's going them? crazy. Yeah. Wow. I know. What an interesting thing, I guess. Oh, are I those know. the babies? Yeah. I thought my experience with my eight baby Flemish giant rabbits was crazy. This is some other shit. All yeah. the other tanks they have to have and everything. Oh, yeah. Oof. And it's like, you're not prepared. That's exactly what happened with Arya. God. She had all her Gosh, babies, they, walked yeah, in. They just had to figure it out on whoa, the spot. Whoa, my God, they're so tiny. They're yeah. tiny. Yeah. See? Not only were we wrong, we almost convinced ourselves removing the eggs would be better for her. Oh, my God. Why do I we want to cry? We had always really stayed like in him. constant contact with our BIMAC experts, one of which had cared so for so dozens of BIMACs through Honestly, props years. to them, though, for, like, trying to step and up. And none of them had yeah. ever not just, like, get, I feel like a lot of people would just, just like, toss them. Oh, yeah. Educational He's trying to save them. The yeah. struggle mm-hmm. with hatching them in captivity. Oh. We love supportive parents here. We but do. this uh, three feet from my son's oh my bed God, they're so in central Oklahoma. Cute. Oh, my God, it was like, in Oklahoma. They talked a lot about how they did a lot of research before getting this octopus and they have all the right equipment, tons of research, you know, they they really did their due diligence. They're so cute. I think it's mama. And hope it catches enough food to grow. (laughs) There are very few resources on best methods for rearing baby Bimax. Wow. I didn't know they were called baby Bimax. That makes sense. What else we call them? Baby Bimax. Pussies. Keeping in mind little that little pussy, yeah, that's the cutest a name. Baby no baby bimax. Starve if they hide in the rocks. Yeah, pretty cool story. Mm-hmm. I don't get what's but a bimax. the poor kid is very. It's what a baby octopus is. Just baby bimax. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Oh, but I feel bad for the kid because he's really sad since the other one's gonna die. If at this point you're still considering getting an octopus, maybe first adopt a honey badger <laughs> and see how that goes. <laughs>
The oh babies are going to be staying with Uncle Tim Cute. temporarily. Uncle Tim. Because, in case you forgot, the oh. water filter I installed for Terence leaked for months, and now our house is getting ripped oh, apart. No! It's All packed a up. Nightmare Holy saga. crap! Buckled up for safety. Wow, good for them though. Yeah. With the kids at Uncle Tim's house. A lot of parents would have just chucked this whole totally. thing in the dumpster. Guess who is now yeah. an empty nester. That is so And cool. guess who now has her some new space for a craft room or a peloton. <laughs> and yes, you say a peloton? she is still yeah. alive. A craft room or a peloton. Although there are no eggs left, she still refuses to leave her den. Oh. We will still continue to hand feed her, but at some point... She will stop taking food altogether. Yeah. The work is just beginning with the babies. <laughs> and while we briefly considered like taking a cross country road They're about to take a school. road trip with all the octopus to get them somewhere else. Yeah, yeah they're think... taking it to Tim's house, Uncle Tim. Oh, Uncle Tim. Right. <laughs> Crazy situation, though. That's you never just... know what could happen when I'm you just adopt an animal. Curious about purchase here. Oh, kind of expensive. Not too bad, though. How much? Well, you see, I don't know if is this, this is for a reputable. Spot? Pete's Aquariums. Is, is this for selling... a two-spot octopus? Uh, no, this is for a blue-ringed octopus. Isn't this a California? They, whatever they got is a two-spot octopus. Is, well, this blue-ringed is $209. It's not that bad. That's not that bad. Caribbean octopus, anywhere between $140 and $230. Mm. Add to cart. Wow. Josh would love a pet. He is like an obsession with octopus. And I kind of think Holly's going to follow suit because now she's really into octopus as well there's an octopus in one of her books and whenever i'm like where's the octopus she gets so excited she like shakes points to it I'm like oh you're just like your dad well don't get any ideas we're not getting an octopus you would get one no in another lifetime you wouldn't no no they can escape dude i've, I've seriously seen stories of them like eating dogs okay never mind <laughs> Yeah, that I mean, not all breeds, I'm really sure, bad the big ones. To. It would be a cool pet to have. I just, I feel like it's a ton of work. It's not something you just half-ass. Uh, no. You know? like Right. Yeah. I've got, a, I've got 10 pets. Yeah, I'm talking I'm about busy. like decades from now when you're trying to get Maybe pets. one day. What kind of pet do you want that you don't already have? A chameleon, I think, would be really cool. Mm, I agree. I'm interested in reptiles. But that's there's so much care. They and are. It's like a whole science you need to learn. So Like a whole science. Like a science. It's like a science. Yeah. But you're yeah. women in STEM, so it doesn't matter. Exactly. I'm sticking to mammals for the time being. I do have a fish tank, though. But see, that's a lot of work, too. Is like, Well, saltwater tanks are like science. Yeah. And it's depressing because oftentimes the fish die. And we had our clownfish who was swimming <gasps> upside down for like a month. And then I really got attached to it because it was upside down. And the guy told us like, yeah, sometimes they just, they don't, they're not good swimmers. It even says in my daughter's book, we were reading an aquarium book and he was like, did you know clownfish really suck at swimming? Didn't oh my say God, exactly So that, Nemo but. with his fin already had a disadvantage yeah. now. Yeah. Well, I like, I loved our little clownfish because he was kind of like Nemo. He was a little bit of a struggler. He swam upside down. You guys came and saw him yeah. and then he died like a couple days later. He waited for us to see him. <laughs> yeah. I was so, I was Me worried too. about him. Me too. I was worried. I know. So like that's, I get really attached to the fish and then they die and it's a whole like, mm, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seeing fish suffer is really sad too. It is so sad. Because like, can't do anything. Oh my God. I followed this one account where this beta fish was all of a sudden getting like the spins and it was just spinning around and uh, around. I saw that exact same one. She had like a parasite. Yeah. That just makes you spin. Yeah. There's a name for it. I saw that. Yeah. It was so sad. I was so upset by the whole thing. Oh. Like, what can we do? You can't do anything. Dude, pet ownership is so hard sometimes. Also, these real. octopuses only live uh, about a year, year and a half. What? Wow. In, cap in, capa in, ca captivity. in captivity. In Oh, my God. In capacity. In cap captivity. Captivity. Yes. That. Wow. <sighs> okay. Well, this was your science lesson for the day, folks. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Enjoy that. Pigs and octopuses. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the pigs. God, the pigs are iconic. Can't wait to do that. And our, what is it called? Dressage? Yeah. So excited. Hobby horsing. Dressage. Hobby <laughs> horsing. And hobby horsing. But we're going to do dressage too. Well, because you guys sent me a video the other day of that guy doing dressage, basically. Yeah. He was in a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was into that as well. We should do that. Mm-hmm. So since becoming a parent, I have found several brands that have become staples in our household. And one of those brands is KiwiCo. You guys know how much I love KiwiCo and how many times we've already talked about it. But I recently got an amazing new item from KiwiCo that we have been loving in our house. 
And this thing is so cool. It has a dry erase board, but it can also be used with crayons, which is so much easier for my daughter to use and way less messy, but it does work on dry erase as well. And then that part flips over and becomes a chalkboard, which is super cool. But then the other side is where it gets really cool. And my daughter's not quite old enough to use this side because there are marbles involved and it's kind of complicated for her age, but we know that she's going to love it one day and we've been having a lot of fun with it. You basically build this little track for the marble to go down and there's all these different components to make the marbles do different things. And it's really fun to set up and watch it go down in different patterns. KiwiCo carries tons of really good quality toys. I love their wooden toys. They're just so much better quality than some of the things you get out there that are plastic. And I feel like wooden toys really encourage imagination. With KiwiCo, you can discover science, technology, engineering, art, and math concepts through fun, hands-on projects delivered right to your door every month. Each crate is designed by real experts and tested by the real experts, which are kids, to ensure that every experience is age-appropriate, engaging, and seriously fun. Crates come with everything needed for kids to build, including materials and instructions, and you'll be surprised at how high quality the materials really are. It can be so hard to find creative ways to keep your children engaged, challenged, and most importantly, off their screens. And KiwiCo does the legwork for you, so you can spend quality time tackling projects together. And there's something for kids of all ages. There's no commitments so you can pause or cancel at any time. You can cultivate your child's natural curiosity while encouraging them to be an innovator and creative thinker. They'll explore new worlds and rediscover familiar ones without leaving home. Give them all the tools they need to learn new skills, build new experiences, and make connections to the broader world. Redefine learning with play and explore projects that build confidence and problem-solving skills with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month of any crate line at KiwiCo.com with promo code SESH. That's 50% off your first month at KiwiCo.com promo code SESH. Sesh. Okay, so what do we have to talk about today? Well, <sighs> big some big breaking news. Huge breaking news. Um, it's going to change your life. First of all, this one will really change your life. The Golden Bla- Blatchler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Golden Blatchler. The Golden Blatchler. They have called it quits. This is shocking. Gary and Teresa. Is it though? It's like the, I would say it's the most shocking of like, really? The qu- the quitters of the show. I think so. I think it's. I totally don't was not planning for this. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was not planning for this. This was not on Sydney's no. schedule. <laughs> no, I had a year. feeling that this would happen. It's a fucking bachelor, dude. Okay, the only reason it's I'll say that I didn't think show. it would happen is because they're old and <laughs> yeah, that's why I thought. It was- and they were they kept being like, we don't have much time left, blah blah blah. So I figured like they lost spouses already and. So I feel like they're more mature. They've lived more life mm-hmm. experiences. So I feel like they would have stayed together and they were already married. But we also know that Gary's a fucking liar. We found out that truth. It's true. Yeah, but Teresa said that had nothing to yeah, do yeah, with the divorce. Said, yeah, okay. she literally said that had nothing to do with that. Um, but also, <laughs> I'm sure like, it didn't. <laughs> two weeks ago, we talked about how they're living apart and I knew it was a red flag. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course it is. They probably like stretched this out an extra month or two to make it be like, at least we made it three months. I'm sure they like pretty much called it quits a while back. It was funny too in their interview. They went on Good Morning America on April 12th when they announced that they're divorcing. Three months after their wedding, they said that Teresa or Gary said, Teresa and I had a number of heart to heart conversations and we looked closely at our situation and our living situation and so forth. And we kind of came to the conclusion mutually that it's probably time for us to dissolve our marriage. God, Kendall's a straight hater. Of course they got to say dissolve, too. Not divorce? Just say divorce. They're like trying to like, and the, the interviewer was like, you mean divorced? <laughs> but yeah, they didn't share too many details about what led up to their split. But we do know that they, you know, had been long distance since, the, since their wedding and are having a hard time deciding where they wanted to settle down. So it just didn't work out. They said that they were touring tons and tons of homes. Uh, and they kept being like, okay, we'll do it this fall. We'll do it this summer. And they just couldn't mm. couldn't do it. But this is sad. They were supposed to go on their honeymoon next month. To Aww. Italy. To Italy. Ratchet. Damn, I would have waited. Oh my God, Kendall is a straight I hater. I know. I hate that franchise, especially after we did that deep deep dive. They're like just, it's so scummy. I fucking hate all of it. I thought you loved The Golden Bachelor, I though. Did, I, I mean, I only watched two episodes of it. Yeah. But yeah, I liked the the concept better and it seemed seemed very cute. Clearly, this shit doesn't work, though. No, I think. Now it, I have no hope. They have families yeah. and I. it makes sense. They, how are you have grandchildren, you have your kids that live near you who moves to who why didn't they talk that, about that 
in like before in the they got engaged that's well, what's annoying to me is like you knew these problems existed why weren't you talking about this and finding a solution before you got engaged because they're on a tv show being pressured into doing this as fast as possible so they don't have time for those conversations they want it all about love and juiciness and like no real life anything it's easy to fall in love when you're on these little vacations and they're blaring don't stop believing and fireworks are going off <laughs> obviously you're going to fall in love and then it's the same thing What's annoying to me, and they need to take a page out of the Love is Blind book, do it in a city where everyone already lives. Make this easier for these people versus having people from all over the country. Because then it's more like if if they had a group all from North Carolina, yeah. then they're already there. I you don't have that's... these like fucking massive problems to figure out. It's even harder with people who already have children and have built lives and have careers. I guess that's true. You know, versus a younger couple who's just kind of starting their life and can maybe adjust easier. But they, yeah. have, they have families and kids. Okay. Okay. I just think I am done with the Bachelor franchise completely. Kendall's I'm over it. I don't give a fuck anymore. Oh, shit. <laughs> Okay, fine. <laughs> I don't believe in love anymore. Gary they, and Teresa are it. They did say that, well, TMZ said that Teresa's job was a large factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because, like, what is she supposed to do? She was a senior compliance officer in New Jersey, and supposedly she wasn't wanting to leave her job to move to Indiana or South Carolina for Gary. Okay, so why couldn't Gary move? Yeah, Gary. Because he probably, there's... In my family. opinion, there's probably a lot more behind the scenes that we don't know. And they oh, want this to look nice and clean. And it just didn't work out because of our differences in state. And so we're done. But I, I think the there's more. Mm-hmm. That's a bummer. Can't cash out on that. Yeah, because you waited. have to be together for like a year or something. They mm-hmm. should have waited till after the honeymoon to announce this. I'm mm-hmm. just saying. I know. I would have gone to Italy paid free. Yeah, I they mean, should've. would you have though? Like how yeah. awkward if you're literally, you know, that I you're going like- to break up when you go to vacation they i feel well, like are they gonna like, film it oh, no no so then just go and do separate things exactly they enjoyed hanging out with each other i really think that the living situation was the biggest issue yeah they said they're still in love yeah i could see that okay they're still in love <laughs> yeah they're still in love that's what he said then you make it work if you're really they're not in love i mean how much how in love can you be after six weeks they probably still have feelings for each other but they're not gonna like pick up their lives because they were going to move to South Carolina because her son lives there and then he has family there. But the job was a factor. And then, you know, they're like, well, it's just not going to work. So. Well, maybe they should have thought of that before they went on the bat. Damn, Kendall's brutal today. I, I agree. Just think of a damn. I, I would have dropped that question too. I yeah. just think this show just gets in your emotions and it's just annoying. If I can flex a little bit, I never watched the show. Oh. Good for you. <laughs> Honestly, that is a flex. Why? It's a dumbass show. I'm done with it. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney loves that show. Don't offend her. Of course, I know. It's I like mean, Sydney's I, favorite show. I don't is like, it really? No. Oh, sorry, Sid. I didn't realize you loved it that she much. She watches, you watch every single season. I don't watch like the full thing though. Like oh. I usually will watch kind of like the end drop of it. in. Yeah. I get that. It's, I'm not like obsessed with it. You watch, watch his, what's his nuts season, the dude from last time? No, like from, Pretty much the middle, like to the end. Mm-hmm. I don't watch like mm. the very first part, but that's the worst part. The beginning, that's yeah. Annoying. There's too many people. I can't keep track. Of I them. think it's just like funny to watch when there's like five to six girls left, and there's just kind of drama or whatever. But yeah, I'm not like I used to. The last follow couple of episodes it, though. are pretty interesting. Normally, probably would you go on The Bachelor? Absolutely not. Good. Well, that's yeah. the but right you'd answer. go on Love Is Blind. Yeah, because they're doing it. Much better. Oh, okay. no way. Just like what's his name? <laughs> Lick- Nicholas Leachy said, <laughs> fucking, he's like, this is a show for love, guys. <laughs> yeah, take it seriously. Well, at least, like I said, to their credit, they're finding people who could actually end up together because yeah. they live in the same area. And also, I mean, still, True. like, The Bachelor still only casts, like, unattainably beautiful people. Yeah. So does Love is Blind. Yeah. No, they're a little bit more no, normal looking. A little bit more. But I think they could do better at that for sure. Especially I think could, for a show yeah. called Love is Blind. No, 100%. Yeah. But I'm saying compared to The, compared compared to the, the Bachelor. Two, and Bachelor. So get all the uglies on there if Love's really blind. I'm on their next season. <laughs> Crowley, stop. Crowley. But just so, you guys, you. just so you guys know, Teresa and Gary are both still planning to look for love. Just oh, I'm so glad. Wait a this. second now. <laughs> Wait a damn second. I thought they were in love. Yeah. You found love. <laughs> Wait a damn second. It's not very convenient love, okay? <laughs> what? 
Wait, wait, wait. They need to do a risk-free proposal next time. A risk-free <laughs> proposal. <laughs> They're looking for love. So when they have to give back the rings, it's going back to Neil Lane. Yeah. Right. So what's the deal? I think you have to be together a year before you get to so. keep it. Something like that. Just make it work for okay. like nine more months, bro. They don't have much time, dude. <sighs> That's what they keep saying in the show. They're like, we don't have much time. Mm. Oh, it has to be more than two years. Oh, two years. That's a long time. That is a long mm. time. Three Three months, they couldn't do two years. Well, Neil Lane's like, I'm not giving fucking people a whole ass diamond just for a couple months. Like, okay, how much were it. these rings? Deserve like, this. How much were these rings, I wonder? I sure, expensive. They're always big honkers. Yeah. Big honkers. <laughs> <laughs> Average <laughs> ring cost on Bachelor. Neil- oh, wow. What's his name? Neil Diamond? The Neil price Lane. of Bachelor. <laughs> Neil Time, bitch. Neil Diamond. That's a singer. Caroline. God, our grandparents lived for Neil Diamond. I love they saw Neil him Diamond. Like a Diamond's few years iconic. before they passed, remember? Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> that's I, an icon. I love him. The price of Bachelor engagement <laughs> rings <laughs> varies each season, though most are estimated to cost between 45000 to upwards of 100 oh, oh, wow. thousand? Yeah, look at that. Honestly, I'm surprised it's not more. Ew. 95. That's fucking insane. I'm surprised it's not more. If well, I don't get it, if I don't get a Neil Diamond diamond, I don't want him. <laughs> it's just because it's big. Wow. God, those are all pretty ugly. Yeah. Wow. Not all of them. They're right. Some of those are nice. Wow. I wonder which one um, Teresa had. I wonder if they can pick it. Gary picks it. Gary picks it. You yeah. watch the show? No, no. Nope. <laughs> she just <laughs> said she's never show. watched it. I know, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> they they like get, Neil sometimes comes out and he's like brings a little box of diamonds. Yeah, Neil's he's like, out. which one you want? Mm-hmm. Which one? Which one? You he has want? like six to choose from. He's like, well, great. I will most likely be getting this back, so it doesn't really matter to me. Because what are the <laughs> stats for the Bachelor? Like so fucking low. Uh, I wonder what happens if you like hmm. lose it or something. Well, it's insured. Yeah. Oh, so what if I like accidentally lost it? <laughs> you, they would just well, replace that's. It. Uh, insurance fraud oh yeah that's right that's illegal, <laughs> so, that's illegal. That's oh, illegal. Yeah. <laughs> well Teresa's cute I wish her the best it says I did really like her uh the two franchises have a combined success rate of 19 percent between bachelor and bachelorette I guess it's not terrible for a tv show how many seasons it's is pretty it? bad though how much lower can you set the bar <laughs> yeah man I think I am officially done I I'm not gonna watch another season of Golden Bachelor now. Seeing this shit would, fall maybe. apart, really? Well, I only watched like the final two. It made me cry. Yeah, you. I Gary cried crying a on the too. stairs. It was very cute. There was some. I did enjoy it to some degree. Oh, <gasps> what if they had Golden Bachelor in Paradise? It's like all Ooh. the oldies on the beach, <laughs> sucking and fucking. Yeah, <laughs> you just really said that. Yeah. Mm. Too hot to handle, but like geriatric edition. What's too hot to handle? Oh yeah, that one is spicy. I never watched it, but um, it's like a what's was one of those Netflix shows. It's like uh, Love Is Blind, but not nobody can have sex. Nobody can. I guess there's like a yeah, there's, there's no a touching. There's no touching. No touching. It's stupid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like the Duggars version. Yeah. No. Yeah. Except. Them. Except they're like, yeah. except they're all horned up. And they make them do like games that make them. Yeah. <laughs> they're first. They're forced to take Viagra, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but they cannot get hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <God. laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I think we, we're done with this topic. I would watch it if Gary was same. <laughs> Gary's you, hot. <laughs> you want to watch Gary? Yeah. Gary's hot. Gary. He's attractive. Don't you think Gary's hot? Yeah, he's all right. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. For an old guy, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. he's a good looking dude. I would feel uncomfortable actually with them on the beach all together because then you know be like multiple people trying to make out and that kind of grossed me out when they would kiss. Yeah. Like the older. Oh, it grossed you out when the older people kiss? God, what are you, ageist? <laughs> what? No, I just felt like I was watching my grandparents or something. <laughs> <laughs> There's like some awkward moments. Do you guys don't agree? Like, <laughs> do you not? I, don't, I didn't see enough of that. Yeah, I, really I kind of, I thought it was cute when they were kissing. I was like, oh, it's sweet. You probably liked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, I think Gary's hot, I just said. Wow. Okay, this knows like rewinding this it. This has gotten really <laughs> weird. <laughs> I have nothing else to say on this topic. I have nothing else to say either. All right. Fuck The Bachelor. Oh, (laughs) yay. That's my final words. Yep. As many of you know, finding a good doctor that actually listens to you and takes your insurance is seemingly impossible sometimes, to be honest. 
Thank God I have found ZocDoc because they have made it so much easier for me to find good quality doctors that take my insurance or actually available when I need them, you know, fit my schedule, and of course, listen to me. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. And once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. There's no more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And they have real verified reviews from actual patients, which is so important to me. That way I know that if I'm going to take the time to schedule with them and actually go in, that I'm seeing someone that people really do recommend and that I'm going to get the best experience that I can. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top rated patient reviewed credible doctors and specialists. That's another thing that I really like about ZocDoc is that they don't just have your average PC they also have specialists on there. So anyone that you're looking for for any ailment that you may have, ZocDoc has you covered. And the typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 and 72 hours. And you can even score same day appointments. So it's super, super convenient. You don't have to wait six months to go see the specialist. I've used ZocDoc so many times and I've also turned it on to a lot of my friends and family because again, it's so, so convenient and it's free. So you got nothing to lose by using it. And I highly recommend that you guys check it out if you haven't yet. Go to ZocDoc.com slash sesh and download the ZocDoc app for free and then find a book, a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash sesh, ZocDoc.com slash sesh. Well, in other news, O.J. Simpson has kicked the big old bucket <laughs> and we are all happy to hear. Finally dead. The big old orange juice carton. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Amazing. Yep. O.J. is dead at the age of 76. And we had a big celebration here in the office when we found <laughs> no, out. we didn't. Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. I I've, have zero I shame. I would like to say I broke the news. Yeah, okay, I was did. scrolling on the toilet and I came out and I was like, holy <laughs> shit, you guys. And everyone on the was excited. Oh, nice day. We, we did a little cheer. We did? Woo! <laughs> We've been waiting for this day. You stupid bitch. So yeah, he died of cancer on April 10th at age 76. Now, does anyone out there not know who OJ is? I'm sure there's some people, but yeah. Okay, well, Most he's people a know. former Especially NFL player. If you're a fan of Mile Higher Media content, you probably know. He yeah. played for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, but no one cares about that. And Everyone knows him for a much different reason. Yeah. But yeah, he did play for the Buffalo Bills 11 seasons, yeah. regarded as one of the best running backs of all time. No one cares. He was on, <laughs> he was a household name appearing on TV shows and movies and even on national ad campaigns. What did he used to do? Like the fucking budget ads? For like some type of car he on, rental um, oh, he would like jump else. around with a suitcase uh like, hertz, i think it was for a hertz. budget hurts hurts yeah oh okay he was big for hurts Sick. well then he went to trial dubbed the trial of the century which it really was i mean i yeah, was, was huge. literally not even one years old i think when it happened so yeah i don't remember it but I from whatever too. everything i've heard it really was the trial of the century and in 1995 he was acquitted of murdering his ex-wife nicole brown simpson and her friend Ronald Goldman in L.A. Honestly, this was one of the most horrific murders. Truly. It was incredibly brutal. Truly. Um, which it happened in 1994. So the trial was very shortly after it happened. And the evidence against him is unbelievable. Yeah. I don't think we need to go through it because no. most people like know the deal. And I don't want to talk about it. I do not if like you talking don't know about, about it at all. Literally watch a thousand other documentaries on it yeah we've covered it i've covered it at some point on my yeah, show like years and years and years ago it's but, um, very brutal yeah very very sad bottom line is he was found not guilty yep which was an sh- absolute shock to everyone at the time and, and he's a free in my opinion right you are a fucking moron if you for even a second think that oj simpson is innocent because he's 100 percent guilty all you need to really do is go and listen to nicole's 911 calls yeah. they're so upsetting yeah. i mean it's really just it's such a tragic tragic story she she saw it coming tried so hard to get help the justice system failed her again and again and again but anyway in 1997 a civil trial jury unanimously deemed oj guilty and did order him to pay 
uh, $33.5 million in damages. However, OJ has avoided this obligation using federal and state laws that exclude certain assets from civil relinquishment. He moved back to Florida where the forced sale of residences can be blocked. He received $25,000 monthly pension from the NFL, but creditors couldn't touch it. And then in 2007, um, I'm sure most of you know about this as well. OJ was involved in a kidnapping and armed robbery in Las Vegas. He was part of a group that raided a hotel and casino to steal sports memorabilia from two dealers. And apparently he was trying to reclaim a bunch of his own memorabilia, but got off with as many as 800 collectibles that he had nothing to do with. So just a general piece of shit. He was charged and found guilty of 12 counts, including conspiracy, burglary, robbery, kidnapping, and assault with a deadly weapon, and the judge sentenced him to 33 years in prison with a chance of parole after nine years. Nicole- Which He only served, sorry to interrupt you, he only served nine years in prison. Yeah. yeah. He didn't, yeah, he didn't do more than that. No. Yep, of course, he got the, <clears throat> that chance of parole. Mm-hmm. So Nicole Brown's attorney, Gloria Allred, said that OJ's death is just a reminder of the justice system failing battered women and allowing celebrity men to avoid true justice. Amen. And that is absolutely the truth. I am sick of men. The end. Yeah, seriously. Agreed. But like for real, dude, the mm-hmm. rich famous privilege card Yep. is pulled so many times. Yep. Well, and he got um, Rob Kardashian was one of the ones who represented him. And, and Cochran, right? Yeah, Johnny yeah, Cochran. Yeah, Johnny Cochran. Both pieces. Which Johnny Cochran was also representing Diddy. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's that great. Is coming out. So oh, when is our episode? God. We did an episode on Diddy for yeah, a mile higher. By the time this episode comes out, it'll be our episode tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll come out Thursday this Ugh. week. That thing is insane. Disaster. Oh my God. Holy So shit. much worse than I ever could. I feel like it's so bad. Unless you've really looked into it, they, people don't understand how no. horrific yeah. it's, he is. It's just horrendous. Sick. But anyway, yep, he had Johnny Cochran involved with him. So that guy's yep. just total slime bucket. Slime bucket. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Going back to um, Nicole Brown's attorney. And kind of what she was saying, you know, before the murder, throughout the couple's years together, there were countless allegations of domestic violence and reports of abuse. And Nicole's lawyer even wrote, quote, even though he beat her, inflicted a black eye on her and left her terrified hiding in the bushes in 1989, he was never jailed by a judge for the spousal violence to which she was subjected and to which he pled no contest. Even though he was deemed liable in the civil jury, he still evaded justice. He literally got away with murder. Mm-hmm. and avoided paying the families. Yeah, I mean, how he's treated them ever since is just horrendous. Yeah. Now, this is where it gets crazy, you guys. Yeah. So this has all obviously come out after he passed away, but it is alleged that OJ made all of his visitors, including his family members, yeah. sign NDAs, dude, and didn't allow phones in the room to visit him days before his death. What the fuck was he saying to them? Oh, I can't even imagine. Do you, you think would he would think, like confess to them? Oh, I, I've maybe, but like, maybe. why would you? I was talking to my mom about this this weekend, and she was like, "How evil to do to your kids, though." Be like, "By the way, I did it," and then die. I mean, it's possible that someone on his team felt like they should sign NDAs because when you're that close to death, sometimes you'll just say things, yeah, yeah. you know. Oh, without, yeah, it's it's possible that they felt like he would slip up and say something he wasn't supposed to, or it would be video recorded, yeah, and, you know. True. Not that it's, I mean, I don't agree with it at all. I think he, sh- I think if you're going to be fucking leaving this planet anyway, why not just give this family at least the closure of, I mean, they know that he did it 100%, but why, I just don't understand. Just, just fucking say it. Probably she pretty to much try and like protect all these years to his family that are still here i don't know i guess or it's just his ego is that big that yeah. he, he like wants to continue to hurt them because he hates all of them yeah um but yeah sources told tmz that somewhere between 30 and 50 people saw oj in his las vegas home before he died on wednesday that's a lot of people dude yep and not only did he evade paying 33.5 million to nicole and ron's families but an attorney for ron's father claimed that he owed the goldman family more than a hundred thousand dollars in addition to that david cook who represents ron's father said that their family hasn't seen any of that money owed obviously david said he died without penance 
He did not want to give a dime, a nickel to Fred, never anything, never. It's terrible. Yeah. In 2022, they renewed the court judgment, which showed that OJ had only paid the family $133,000 since the 1997 trial. Yep. It's like That's 1% of the total. So bad. Mm-hmm. That is so fucking bad. Especially when he's gone on to continue profiting off of the murders he committed. Literally. Family's lawyers have tried literally everything to get their hands on some of this money, but they always run into the same problem. OJ's money is protected. They did have a small win, which was obtaining the rights to OJ's books, which was, or one book, which was called If I Did It. For some reason, though, I thought it was called I Didn't Do It, but if I did, here's how I would have done it. No, I think that's, I think that he says that in the book. Oh, that's what he said yeah. in the book? Gotcha. It's a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, I never wanted to read that fucking book. Who's reading that book? Oh, I'm sure tons of people. Yeah, I guess. I'm sure they made There's tons a of lot of people of who genuinely believe that he did not do it. Well, yep. especially now, and we'll get into it in a little bit, yeah. but the sales have skyrocketed. Yes. Yeah. Oh, big time now. But their families are looking to hire attorneys in Nevada, Florida, and California to see what can be done. And the first step is figuring out where OJ's money is going now that he's dead. OJ's final will was filed in Clark County, which is in Nevada, two days after his death. And uh, the will stated that OJ's longtime lawyer, Malcolm Laverne, 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 thank you, was named as executor of his estate. And OJ's son, Justin, was named his successor. OJ did request for his property to be placed in the Orenthal Simpson Revocable Living Trust and also signed that his last wishes for his remains would be attached to the will itself. OJ's lawyer told the Las Vegas Review Journal in an interview, it's my hope that the Goldmans get zero, nothing, them specifically, and I will do everything in my capacity as the executor or personal representative to try and ensure that they get nothing. How can you just openly be that evil? Such a piece of shit. Fuck all of these people. The will also lists his four children and says any beneficiary who seeks to challenge provisions of the will shall receive free of trust one dollar and no more in lieu of any claimed interest in this will or its assets. God, moving on here. There is a huge increase in sales of OJ's memorabilia since his death, which is not surprising, sadly. I guess not surprising, but kind of disturbing. I can't believe people even buy. Yeah, <laughs> there's so a insane. store in Vegas that has a bunch of his collectibles. Yeah, and they're saying how it's really ignited a new interest. Mm-hmm. It's like popping off. The company and scriptograph say um, they saw an increase in web traffic and sales just hours after his death. The owner even opened their Las Vegas store early due to high demand. And the store is located only minutes away from where OJ lived. Yeah. By early afternoon, more than 100 items sold after his death. And the items ranged anywhere from $150 to $2,000. People are actually buying this shit. Why? Why? Because they're freaks. I don't know what to say. I don't know why you would ever want to own anything of his. Like, what are you going to do with that display in your fucking No, house? people say that it's a the good conversation, conversation starter. starter. Yeah, I saw Which that. I'm like, I uh, guess, but like, that's a really weird way to reason that i guess yeah doesn't it remind you of brian peck having uh yes what john wayne gacy stuff mm-hmm. yeah conversation starter yeah Being whack yeah Ugh. but apparently they're adding they're planning to add more uh inventory to this collection <laughs> great they have tons of stuff though they've got buffalo bills jersey autographed baseballs action figures and a signed rookie trading card they even have a signed photo that was confiscated as evidence in oj's 2007 robbery trial and according to the store oj has always been a top seller for them saying people love having his memorabilia as conversation pieces like we said what kind of conversation is starting from that why do you have this yeah yeah (laughs) bizarre yeah there's a buffalo bills helmet going for twenty five hundred dollars some jerseys going anywhere between high threes and like close to 500. Another um, uh, evidence photo, like we talked about, going for about 2,500. I just don't get it. And I know people make the argument of, you know, this is history. Even when it's dark history, it's still part of our history. I don't give a shit. This man got away with brutally murdering two people. We don't need to remember his history or honor his career in any way. This shit should be burned. The money that is made through this should go to Nicole's family. Yeah, that's yeah, and Ron's family. Yeah, and Ron, of course. I, I agree. But, but that's not how the world works, and that will not happen. But that would be nice. But this is just a whole 
like you were saying, Kendall, it's very... This is, like, not that uncommon. Uh Uh-uh. And why... What is with the fascination of it? I don't know. I'll never understand it. People are obsessed with Ted Bundy. Yeah. Yeah. That whole thing... The fact that people were writing letters to him and are mm-hmm. they have like merch of like yeah like his face with heart eyes on it like it's they so think bizarre. he's hot like some anyone I don't understand the serial killer merch people people get crazy with it it's so disrespectful it is I don't understand yeah I saw someone selling like a Ted Bundy candle that had like blood dripping down it and a knife in the middle it's just like God that's so fuck, bad it's sick. I don't, people don't understand what's wrong with it. I'm going to share this link. Um, It's from this website that literally only sells like serial, serial, serial killer um, memorabilia, including Jeffrey Dahmer's prison art, um, Richard Ramirez Ew. drawings, dude, um, letters from Richard Ramirez. Um, Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. John Wayne Gacy's skull crown painting, $6,000. Disgusting. Why would you want this in your home? Yeah, oh, that's creepy. Dude, these people buying this are just so sick. Jeffrey Dahmer prison Bible and letter, $10,000. Jeffrey Dahmer prison art. Looks like he just drew. Oh, and it's of a leg. Oh, that's so creepy. Why would you ever want this? 12 grand, someone's going to pay for that? I feel like people that buy this stuff are almost like, are like these people then. You know, they... Yeah, well, we saw that with Brian Peck, right? Yeah. It's really, really creepy. Signed footprints. Ooh, I just got a really weird feeling, guys. Ooh, can we, like, close these? Actually, can we close these uh, websites? <laughs> I just had a really, 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 really weird feeling. Get right in my no, throat. Dude, I feel you. I started getting a stomach ache just now like, looking at that. It's just so disgusting. I completely understand you, Corelli. I mean, I feel the same way. It makes me sick. And there's people that enjoy all this stuff so much. Oh, it really, like, makes me feel yucky. I don't even want to look at it anymore or think about it. Mm, this one collector john schwank says that he cares deeply about his disturbing collection that he's had for almost 20 years this guy has a collection of hundreds of drawings hair samples clothing, dentures oh what is wrong with you he says it's part of our history things that have happened throughout the years then will never be forgotten okay we write it down to remember our history we have it plenty documented we don't need to keep hair samples and dentures of murdered what people. are your You're thoughts sick. what are your thoughts about like museums that are dedicated to horrific events in history and have those types of things and people go and look at and pay for well i mean i think i don't know it's a hard conversation like i went to the holocaust museum recently and i think that's really important that we have documented evidence of what people went through it was horrific yeah they had so many items in there that just i mean talk about getting sick i literally it was so awful but i feel like i needed to see it yeah, we need that documented because there are, there are people that'll try to claim it d- didn't yeah. happen, you know. But in a museum, I think it's so different, especially a nonprofit museum sure. like that. I understand. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are museums that are, I'm sure, more just like totally for profit and just exploiting it. And how horrific would you feel if that was your family member's dentures or fucking hair? It's so weird to me. I will never understand this. Yeah. I I agree. I think it is very odd. That stuff should be returned to the families, period. They can do whatever they want with it at that point. Yeah. But yeah, this collector, John, he says he calls inmates about five times a week and is pen pals with many, including the notorious cult leader, Charles Manson. Yeah. Jeremy Jones, who's a convicted serial killer with over 20 victims, and uh, Martin Kipp, convicted rapist and murderer. He's just chatting them up. What the fuck do you talk about? Obviously, this article was written years ago, so he's, I don't know if he's still doing this, Yeah, but I mean, he was, this is when uh, Manson was alive, so. Also, I think what is a huge part problem in this whole thing is that this whole memorabilia thing really takes away from the victim Mm -hmm. and the actual person who really should be remembered and quote unquote, like, celebrate it, you know what I mean, versus like this the actual perpetrator Mm -hmm. um who get no say in it yeah their items being stolen they're Mm -hmm. like body parts and that's so fucking weird to me yeah i mean there are some laws in place that are you know barring uh, convicted criminals from profiting from their crimes including the son of sam law the law if you're not familiar is um Named after David Berkowitz, who pled guilty to killing six people in New York. He in, was a real sick fuck, yeah, that guy. Yeah, 1976 and 77. Um, 
the murderers got their name from the letters Berkowitz left for police signed son, son of Sam. So that's mm-hmm. where the name comes from. Yeah. After his arrest, a book publisher um, offered to buy the rights to his story for $75,000 plus $250,000 in advance. However, thankfully, lawmakers did not want him cashing in on his own crime. So they crafted this law, which led to a years long First Amendment debate. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Imagine if like Casey Anthony had the free reign to write a book. She was blocked from that for a while. Yeah. Did she ever... I I had heard that she, the time had passed and she was going to be able to do one or something. She did that weird interview with um, I think Idea at some point oh, I recently. That. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that whole thing. Yeah, which is bizarre. Um, many states though have overturned the Son of Sam laws, uh, by courts because it, they claim that it violates free speech. <laughs> That's insane. I'm sorry, but you don't have certain rights after you commit those types of crimes. In some in cases, it's opinion. been used to prohibit convicted criminals from selling their stories. And going back to OJ, in 2007, he wrote a book called If I Did It, and OJ insisted that most of the book was written by a ghostwriter without his involvement. Which I'm like, yeah, shut the fuck up, dude. What? I'm sure you were very involved. I'm sure it was a ghostwriter, but... Yeah. He, and he, the premise of the whole book is basically like this hypothetical story of yeah. how he could have killed Nicole and Ron. God, I remember if he had that, been the perpetrator. When that book came out, it was crazy. Everyone was just like, what? That's just so weird. It was Why would so you bizarre. Say, like, I just feel like that has guilty written all over your face. Of, of like, Oh, I didn't do it, but if I was going to, here's how yep. I do it. Yep. And I mean, it's, it's just, he knows that that type of title is going to sell a ton. Yeah. He probably made a ton of money off of well, it. Well, he got hella backlash and actually that version was never released. Mm-hmm. Um, but Ron's family took this matter to court and the court ordered the profits of his book deal, if I did it, to be turned over to Ron Goldman's estate. And I love what they did here. Yeah. They're... Since they got rights to it, they renamed it. Yeah, it's but got four stars. Well, yeah, and since he's died, Best people are buying it up. It's flying off the fucking shelves right now. Yep. It sits at number one bestseller in criminology. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, for decades, a portion of the book sales um, has gone to the Goldman family, but they haven't made that much off of it. Mm-mm. Now, I guess the silver lining is that with the book starting on Amazon, they'll, you know, make a yeah, decent amount of money. Hopefully, try to recuperate some of that you know, 30-something million yeah. that they are owed. God. Oh, it's just so, so bad sad. for both of their families. They've Me just too. been through such hell, and it's just never-ending. I honestly hope that they've gotten, like, a little bit of closure now that the, now that he's gone. I wonder what it's been like for them. I'm sure it brings up such a vast array of mm-hmm. emotion, you know? Yeah just kind of all over the place knowing that there's really nothing more that they can get from him at this point that maybe they were hoping that one day he would just really confess and maybe they thought on his deathbed it's just i'm sure it just is so overwhelming i just feel so bad for their families i know it's really sad it's horrible but it's yeah it's crazy it's so bizarre to me that people are buying his crap i guess it doesn't really surprise me that much but it's weird yeah it's super weird (laughs) god this is the world we live in so, well, I hope he burns in hell. Were you about to say something, Sid? Oh, yeah. I was just <laughs> trying to <laughs> see when he, when Nicole was killed, Yeah, how old were the kids? And I think I found it. Like, like they were young. Yeah, yeah they, were, they were young yeah, kids. They were really young. Wow. Yeah. God, that's so sad. And then they grow up. I mean, they probably grew up too, like being told your dad did this. And then, yeah. like, what a way to... I know. Ugh. All right, guys. Well, there's not much more to say on that other than, yeah, fuck O.J. Simpson. And like I said, I hope he burns in hell. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. That's all I got to say. That's fine. That's fine. Do you yeah. not? I mean, yeah. I, yeah, I do. <laughs> I think he's horrific. Yeah. Um. Just... Ugh, I can't believe I honestly can't believe he got away with it. It's crazy. I know. It's one of the most mind blowing cases ever. Yeah. Sometimes I think like when we die, do we really, you know, go and have to face our lives? Do you get your life in review? So like a council that brings everything up and you have to like, you know, finally face what you've done in your life or maybe the people yeah. you've hurt. Who are already there like i like to think of nicole and ron being able to confront him or something really yeah 
I mean, who knows, right? People say that that's a thing now. People who have had like near death experiences. Oh, yeah. I I just watched one about this guy who said that. Yeah, he had a near death experience, and he was met by these aliens, and they were reviewing his whole life with him, and just were like interesting. He, were like, he was like, it felt like when your friends send you on a roller coaster, and then you get off, and they want to know how the ride was. God, that's crazy. Yeah, it was an interesting I video. can't even fathom that, dude. I know. People say that, yeah, it plays like a movie or life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God, that's so weird. And I'm like, fast forward, fast forward. Yeah, I'm seriously. <laughs> skip these few yeah. years, please. Yeah. It's like that yeah. episode of Black Mirror. Ooh. Oh, which one? The one where like they have like the chip in their head and they can like oh, uh, fast yeah. forward and go back and stuff and whatever. Which one is that? Black Mirror. It's a. Uh, I don't remember. It's an old episode. I remember, uh, that but they though. have like the like they see their life. It, there's like a chip in their head, and they can like fast forward. It's almost like click, dude. For all we know, that mm. could be happening. Okay, with Neuralink coming. Yeah, yeah. So people are talking about like literally uploading your memories. That's, That's basically what they did. They they were up. They upload their memories and like I think, I think in the show it was like a breach of some. I don't know. Oof. I don't want to do that. Or maybe I do. Would you want to do that? Yeah, I would want to do that. Really? Yeah. Like, I think upload. it would make me like sad. Like after I'm dead? Yeah, I guess. That's true. Yeah, I want to review my life. Yeah. Do you have like... That's true. Mm, these are probably too intensive conversations. I don't want to... What? Trigger your fear of death. Well, it's triggered 24-7. What? <laughs> I don't know. I've just been thinking a lot about... Death? My... Like Sorry. what theory makes most sense to me as far as the purpose of life and death and what happens and where we go and... It's just interesting what to a, think about. What's your conclusion so far? I don't know. I just, I really think that we are all on this planet to to learn something, that it's soul development, and we go through all these different lives because we are, at the end, our soul is collectively learning all these things from different experiences that people go through things for a reason. And I've been thinking a lot about that lately because I have like people in my life that sometimes I, I like to try and step in too much yeah try to like put them on the path that i think is best or like help them with their lives and i'm trying to remind myself that it really goes against my own personal beliefs of that's what their soul know, needs that, yeah that it's all about soul development i think that's a a great way to look at it i definitely subscribe to like some of those thoughts because i agree there's especially and i think most people can relate to this of friends and family that you really care about are doing things that you wish they wouldn't or would do something different or in your right. eyes you're like god if you only did x y and z your Just life would be so much better or something, yeah or like how can you not see that you're on you're doing something stupid that you shouldn't be but at the end of the day like who are you to interfere yeah, with their soul's that's, journey and like do you really know what's best you think you do mm. but like what makes you qualified to know what's better for someone's life than they do exactly exactly it's live and let go yeah it's hard it is it's yeah i think that's a good thing to have though because i think it helps you you know be less like i guess i don't know i think it i think it's helpful to like allow yourself to be less affected and like obsessed and hurt by other people's yeah. actions mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know it's it's weird to think about it i would like to believe in reincarnation i mean like that sounds great yeah i just don't know i don't like have this like strong like i know that blah 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 i don't know yeah i don't feel like i know 100 like, sometimes i, just I get scared towards I'm like what that. if we're just literally in the ground and lights turn off i don't like that one that that's I what i mean by to. like really that's what i mean by like the fear of death in me because it's so there's nothing more final than no nope. that there is nothing more final than that. And I don't like that. I don't know. I really do think we go on. I and maybe like we go to that. different planets. and That'd be you know, kind of sweet, honestly. Experience all these different but things. But then I get scared. I'm like, well, well will I be alone? Because I like, what if the people that I know on Earth are not, their souls aren't on the same path, which they're probably not, right? Well, it depends on how you look at it. Because a lot of, a lot of theories around reincarnation say that you come back and you have some of the same people from your past lives in your life now, but they're in different roles. Like sure. your mom could have been your child or yeah. 
your dad could have been one of your friends or like a college professor yeah. or like but they're still the same but then yeah there's but you wouldn't know it's right the thing your brains <laughs> you'd be slated clean onto the next because you got to r- totally re-evolve as a new person and evolve your soul i don't like the unknown i know this conversation's like pretty intense for you i normally don't like to talk about these things with you because i don't want to like stress you out because i know you really it's a real thing oh for you. yeah it's my biggest fear in the world which i know is like okay you know so no i don't think everyone. it is that's such a com- well yeah it's common but like some people have like a serious i have a serious yes fear of phobia it. yes it's literally a phobia of it to mm-hmm. the point where like i won't watch or consume <laughs> it's odd because our my job is true crime yeah. and unfortunately that's a lot of that but yeah outside of that like i don't want anything to do with that kind of stuff because it freaks me out so much like i yeah it's uh Mm-hmm. it's a lot but it is a lot i mean yeah and the thought of like there's nothing you can do about it mm-hmm. everyone like everyone's nope. gonna die yeah it's not it's not if it's when Ugh. I know. sick hate that but i don't really you know. have any fear about myself dying is that weird no oh, i do i'm not afraid of going through death myself i'm more afraid of being alive and losing, losing others yeah. yeah yeah i think that's totally real i'm afraid of that i'm afraid of all the above mm. like oh it's tough man I'm sure a lot of people relate to that like to the point where i'm scared like what if you bur- bury someone and then they come back to life and they're like in their coffin alive and they <laughs> oh can't God, get out this is getting real dark yeah anyways that happens that. remember we talked about that at one point on this show the girl who was like about they were about to bury her. oh yeah holy fuck. where was that that was i don't remember but yeah i remember that Dude, she was in the coffin. Yeah, and then they like brought her out and no, she was no, still no, breathing. No, 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 <laughs> no. Where was that? Did, wasn't no. that um, in Ethiopia maybe? I don't know. Yeah, it was definitely. Oh my God, Ecuador. I remember that. Ecuador. So bad. Ecuador. <sighs> thought, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, she, was, she was declared dead and then she came back to life. God, no. Thank God they found her, dude. That's what I'm I saying. Know. I know. Hell no. And she was declared dead twice in one yeah. week. Yeah, wild. I don't really have anything else to say about that. Well, this has been an interesting episode for us. Yeah. Start, I mean, we've had some goofy times. Yeah. Got a little serious. A mm-hmm. um, little deep, a little philosophical, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do more of that. Mm-hmm. Full trip around the moon. Yeah, it was full a full trip. trip around the moon. Around the moon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Around the world. Right, right. Around the world. Yep. Mm-hmm. Started with the pigs. Oh, the pigs. And the Ended octopus. with death. Yeah. <laughs> ended with death great ended with a philosophical talk about life and this and has death. been an episode of your favorite show the sesh you'll never know what you're gonna get that's true we will be back Ooh, not next week sorry about that yeah we will no. be on vacation where are you going nowhere i'll be here aren't you going to chicago just this weekend okay so yeah on part of our break kind of no i'll be back on sunday okay so <laughs> part of the break nah i'll be here but i won't be here with you guys Womp, womp, womp. Yeah. Maybe me and Carly and Sydney just should just go live and talk to you for a few Yeah, minutes. you guys should do that. I thought about that. I feel like that'd be really fun. Let us know would if you guys like want us to do that, if you would find that fun. I'm not going to like plan anything for it. Just that'd like go on and see what's, what's popping. Yeah. That'd be fun. You know? Yeah, you guys should do that. I've never, we've never done a live stream on this channel, I don't think. Mm mm. Yeah, that'd so. be a good time. I'll, I'll tune in. Okay. Hell yeah. Sounds like a good time. If I'm not on the beach. Yeah, I was going to say, if I were you, I would not be tuning in. Yeah, I may be tuning in. I'll be sitting my ass on the beach. I'm really excited. Josh and I are going away together for the first time since before our daughter was born. Are you scared? I am. I'm a little nervous. I know she's yeah, going to be in you. good hands with my daddy. Um, but I'm just, I'm just stressed to not be... So I was telling you the other day, I even miss her when I put her to bed. Right. You said you wanted to wake her up. And I just did. Be like, hey. At 11 the other night, I was like, dude, it's been like four hours since I've seen her. I was getting sad. So I'm going to really miss her. So I've been taking little video clips of her every day so that every night I can like oh, that's go through idea. them. Yeah. It's going to be hard, but it's so important, I know, for our relationship to have alone time. And, and it makes you know. your bond with Holly even stronger. Exactly. What it's is the fucking saying? The heart. Distance grows makes stronger. the heart grow stronger that or one. something like that. Fonder. Fonder. Yeah. Distance makes the heart grow yeah. fonder. Amen. Yeah. So I'm really excited. We're going to go to Florida. Sounds fun. Have some romance. I love Florida. Oh, sh- mm, it's going to get spicy. Mm-hmm. No, I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. But I will miss you guys. 
I hate being away from this show, especially. It's so much fun. It's yeah. so much fun on this show. Uh, news to pop culture. Nothing happened in the next week, please. Yeah, please. And then drop something crazy when we come back. Yep. Something interesting for us to talk about. Okay. Well, that's going to be it for the sesh today, you guys. Thanks for tuning in as always. We love and y'all. We'll see you on the next sesh. But until then, keep, keep it, it fresh. fresh.